I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step exercise showing how to digitize a full-size diagram to prepare it to create a file that can be cut by plasma, laser, or CNC router. Here it's shown that I've got the full-size diagram fastened to the first table. I'm also going to show that you don't move this diagram until you're totally done. Here I'm showing that this is John Walsh's Jumbo Trace software. Under Setup, Miscellaneous, Digitizing Frequency, it's here that you can select the amount of nodes that are created when you trace the diagram. This is an area that you'll have to experiment with because you have to be careful. If you decrease the amount of nodes, a circle could turn into a, like a staircase, a bunch of square edges. So there's an optimum spot. I usually run between 45 and 48. With a selection of 45, this is what the nodes look like. Some post-processors don't like a concentration of nodes. Here I'm showing Vetrix Aspire 8.0 that I use for node editing. I'm also showing Corel 17 where you bring in the DXF diagram and it says that there's an auto node reduction built into the program. And then you just turn around and resave the program as a DXF file and that cuts back on some of the nodes. I selected tracing polylines. There are different selections and the best thing is to try each one and see which one you like the best. I have found from experience that tracing, selecting polling lines seems to work very good with plasma. I want to point out here that you're, you're wise to fasten down your diagram with masking tape so it will not move. The reason I recommend that is that if you do any editing even after you finish the diagram, you can go back and redo certain parts and it will fit right into the original DXF file. Almost like using an eraser, and when you draw it, it just lines right up with the original diagram. The other point here is that when you're finished, save your file because you can pull that file back, edit out portions you don't like, and redo it again because the diagram is fastened down with masking tape. You can't see it here, but I am holding down the small button on the cordless pen when I'm tracing. At any time that you're not happy with your trace, just stop it and redo it. Sometimes I'll do a trace four or five times before I'm happy with the trace. I like a good smooth trace if I can get it. When you come close to the end, leave about a half an inch to an inch and the computer will fill that in. That way you don't get any overlap. The better your trace techniques, the less editing you have to do. You can always pause and save your work at any time. Here I'm showing tracing the small areas and again it's important to stay away from where you started let the computer fill that in a lot less editing I treated each small area as one draw so in other words, if I made a mistake, I could go back and edit that out and just redo that one spot. Instead of doing, say, five or six small areas and then losing them all, I just did one at a time, let the computer fill it in, and I carried on with the next one, one at a time. You'll also notice a pencil mark on my diagram. That's where I keep track of where I started. And when I came up to that spot, I would stay away about a half an inch.
the diagram's getting uh, almost complete. I'm just doing all the small spots and we should be done. Again, it's worthwhile saving your work every once in a while. Have a take one, take two, take three. That way you can always go back, edit something out, make some changes and save it again. And when you're finally done, you can call it the final copy. We're at the point now where I saved my final copy as the horse final dot dxf. Next I'm going to run Vectric Aspire 8.0. Here I can check for open vectors and do some node editing. This program allows you to take a look at the diagram and check for open vectors. And it's important that you have no open vectors. Even though we had no open vectors, there are spots that I'd like to edit out some of the jagged edges that I made with the pen. This will allow me to smooth out some of those sharp corners. Again, there are a few programs on the market for editing nodes that I know of. I use Vectric Aspire 8.0, but also Corel Draw. Any of the Corel Draws do allow you to edit nodes. I don't use Corel myself personally, but I have seen it used. Again, I'll go through each section. I'll take a close look at each section. Anything I don't like, I'll cut the vector, and then I'll close the vector with a smooth line. Smooth it right out. Once you're happy with your diagram, you'll resave it as the final copy. This is the most interesting part for me, the simulation. The Vectrix program, the Aspire 8.0, has a simulator built in that you can simulate your cut. So I'm going to simulate the cut here and you'll see that uh, it's a good looking piece. I can even give it a bit of a metal color. This program also creates the post-processor file to use in the CNC machine. I'm just removing some of the areas here so that you can look at the diagram just as it's going to be cut. Next I'm going to show a couple of programs that you can take a look at this DXF file. The first one is part of John Walsh's programming. It's called Logic Trace Editor. The second one is CAD Viewer 9. Both these programs will show you what the DXF file looks like. This is a 100 watt CO2 laser 24 by 36 table. I took that DXF file that was created and I shrunk it down about 12 inches from the 47 inch original file. I used a new plexiglass. It's about a sixteenth thick. It looks like bottle ends. It's amber in color. Nice to cut. Vintage. I was cutting about 70% power and about 0.5% speed. Slow speed. Made a nice smooth cut that just popped right out. I call these sun catchers because you put them in the sunlight or in the, on a window and they just show their colors. It's just beautiful. It was a nice cut. Didn't take very much time. I think about six minutes to cut that. Here I'm just taking a look at just what the toolpath is going to do on this diagram. Again, this is just simulating what it looks like on wood. I'm using uh, a quarter inch uh, 
bead bit. It's like a, a sharp bit, like a signage bit, to give the edges kind of a round look. And I'm running at about 40 inches per minute and about 16,000 RPM. I wanted the plaque to have a sort of a carved look, so I started off with that uh, signage bit, kind of a V bit, and then I went to an eighth inch bit and I dropped it down a little lower to make it look like it was a deep cut. And then I ended up with another eighth inch end mill just to cut out some of the cavities. The plaque is a mixture of mahogany, maple, poplar, and a little bit of cherry. Gives it a real variety of color. I see some hoses sticking out there. I used three vacuum pucks to hold my workpiece on the CNC table. I wanted to run this file on the CNC router because it just goes to show you that a DXF file can be lasered, can be plasma, and it can be CNC router. We have a sheet of 14 gauge 4x8 steel loaded on this plasma table and we're getting ready to cut out the horses. Here is where we check to make sure that the stops and starts are okay. Check over the cutting program and we're all set to go. It's worthwhile mentioning the DXF file again. It's here that you may have to make some changes to the DXF file. Plasma is very fussy about the file. Even though the file was checked and the vectors were all closed. Because it's such a large diagram, you might not see a small flaw, whereas the plasma will pick it up. Most plasma machines have a simulator package that you can do a dry run, and that's highly recommended. Do a dry run, make sure there's no errors. The plasma tracking screen shows in color the different cuts, so there you can watch to see how the machine is performing. The colors show the different type of cuts. This is just a different shot from a different angle. The DXF file that we created, what impresses me here is that you can make this horse 3 inches big or 47 and a half inches wide. So from a brooch to a full size horse. Here I'm showing the first horse cut, it uh, looks good. Once we're done, we'll just pound that out and grind off some of the slag. The two horses are complete, ready for the next step. These two horses are destined to become gates. They will be fitted and welded into a gate frame.